Hello, hello. This is Angela Brooks from AngelaBrooks.com. This is Blogging for Profits. And today I want to talk about prospecting is complete rejection hell. Now, the reason I brought this to podcast is because this is over on the blog right now on AngelaBrooks.com. And I just had somebody who unsubscribed from my email list because the word hell come on people we're all adults here um not everything is pretty or um, perfect if that word disturbs you probably want to unfollow me because there's something else that'll probably come out just as well um i've been in network marketing for nine years 11 years of that i had no clue what to do or that I was really even in network marketing. I mean, it was, um, I didn't know there was a method to the madness that I was working. I literally was selling products out of the trunk of my car because I didn't know that I was supposed to sell them a package thing and they would get it mailed to them. The company would mail it straight to their house. I had no clue because nobody told me. And yes, I'm going to date myself just a little bit that was before the internet this is around 1996 97 i think it was more like 97 ish uh, because my son was um, he was at least a year old and i did that probably for two to three years and i was making decent money now i was a single mom back then and you know any cash flow that came in was good And so he could wear the Nike tennis shoes. He could wear the nice clothes. It didn't matter what mama looked like. I wanted my kid to be dressed well. I think it's what most of us moms do. But I didn't have anybody that was giving me direction. And I was working night shift back then. So the only thing that my upline told me back then was that I had to have events or parties or home invasions or whatever you wanted to call that. I had no more energy. I was sleeping three, four hours a day, working 13 hour shifts. Um, I was working three 12 hour or three 13 hour shifts. And when I went off on maternity leave, my supervisor um, took them away from me. It was kind of like punishment, I guess, and put me on five, eight hour shifts, which I thought I was completely dying because, you know, a toddler only sleeps so many hours during the night and he doesn't nap until he's ready to nap. So um, long story short, that one, that took some, um, I had to write that up and, you know, process that situation. I did get my long shifts back, but I just got off the subject altogether. What it was I was telling you was I was green. And, you know, they say in network marketing, um, it comes to being, you, you have to go through a process in network marketing. Um, Because I was so green that I didn't, I didn't have a clue. So there was nothing for me to judge it against or with. I didn't have that support person. So when somebody new comes into my organization, I get it. I know how confusing this is. And I do my best to encourage and to show them how they can make their money back fast. And that is my goal is for them to get their 165 back in their pocket, which they can do it really simple, which is three people. And I know nobody wants to talk to friends or family. I remember how hard it was to get started and I didn't have a warm circle of support. So I didn't have, I didn't have time to do the meetings and on top of not knowing what to talk about, um, no one on my friends list or family list signed up with me and my products for another five years. And yes, I said five years. Um, because sometimes you get punished or rewarded for your past and your family generally sees you as that little kid that they raised, or maybe you was a hillion when you was growing up and they're like, Oh, she's just doing another one of her little things. And they don't support you. That is so normal that it hurts. Um, I've had friends actually really close friends to me, call me, they text me. Um, we talked about products, you know, when we were hanging out because they would bring it up, not me. And they would ask, you know, how does this one work? And, and where do you apply it? And they were super interested. 
And then they would turn around and say the magic words, but I don't have the money. What do you mean you don't have the money? Of course you've got the money because I was watching them do other things. You know, they were going camping in a nice RV. They were, um, you know, you can see when people have money, it depends on what they want to spend it on as to whether that excuse works or not. What ended up happening is um, I had bought a nice little gift basket for a friend of mine and was going to give it to her for Christmas. Well, sometimes it was two or three months before we like saw each other in person, was texting, was Facebooking and stuff like that. And I never did get her Christmas gift to her. And then she sent me a message asking about some of my products. How did I blend them together? And I said, well, you know, it, it's just going to work better if you get your own kit so that you can learn how to do all this stuff. She goes, oh, I got one. I have one. I just, I need to learn how to use it. Oh, where did you get that? Well, I bought it from a girl here. Well, I thought you didn't have the money. Well, I just, I really wanted one. So she got it from somebody somewhere. I don't know if they support her or not, but I wanted to be able to take care of my friends. I wanted to take care of my family. I didn't want somebody else to take care of them. And that you can call that greedy if you want to, but I'm not looking at it. The money part of it is I wanted to have them in my circle because we was already friends and that was just going to be fun, right? <laughs> Wrong absolutely one of my friends even bought stuff off of ebay she would call me and ask me questions then she'd go buy it on ebay and another one would go to walmart and buy this cheap shit and then she would say how do i use this and i'm like i don't know you need to ask somebody at walmart how that works i don't have any clue so um you know i have a, a very close circle i don't um i don't have a wide circle of close-knit friends and there's a reason for that and especially in business you Business is kind of lonely, especially when you work at home. And when you have somebody in your circle, you really do get to where you enjoy it. And it is fun to have somebody that speaks the same language, that is kind of focused on the same stuff, that you can help along. You can go to events together, share, you know, trips and stuff. It's nice to have um, a circle that thinks like you because you can't talk about business to people who are not in business. They don't get it. They think you're an alien or what you're saying makes no sense. Well, actually, it doesn't make any sense to them. So I had a friend who joined me in business. And actually, I met her through a friend of a friend. Um, enjoyed her company. We laughed at crazy stuff. It was fun. Um, we've been on several trips together. I was giving her free courses that I had done. And I've never asked her to buy it course ever. Um, I think she might have paid for one. I don't know. But you know, you get that person and you're like, oh, they're building, they're, they're doing the thing, they're learning the stuff. And that was my travel buddy, somebody I went to events with. And um, we went to an event with a coach of mine, introduced her to some great people that I have in my business circle. And we come home and she jumped ship. And she gets in, she joins uh, another company with somebody that I introduced her to. Now, I don't care who you are. That was a gut, a gut punch. And yes, it hurt. Um, actually, it shut me down for a day because I was like, what did I do? What happened? Why did this happen? You know, you're not going to make money in this industry when you quit. It makes no different what company you're with. It makes no difference who your upline is. Your upline's not going to build your business, period. Um, it is on you to do the work, to share the products. And you may have a new product with a, a new um, attention grabber. But once your close circle is on your product, who do you talk to next? You've still got to learn how to generate leads outside of your warm market circle. And that is where people usually start falling off in this business is because when, when the easy people, the easy conversations stop, it happens every day in this business, every single day in this business is they don't know where to get people. So you still have to find your niche in generating fresh leads that you're always talking to about whatever company that you choose to be in. And it wasn't the company that she jumped to. 
did it hurt that she signed up with somebody that I introduced you? Of course it did. I'm human. Give me a break. Um, and it hurt because we traveled together and I enjoyed her company. Yes, that hurt. Do I care that she went into a company she liked better? No. But you still have to do the work. And people who jump companies, you, you get started and you've got to dig your heels in. And, you know, some people will go to the top in six months. You see it all the time. But there's a whole lot more of the 90% that don't. So wherever you're planted is where you have to dig your heels in. And it, it gets hard after a certain period in your business regardless. It is always um, it's always a dig to look for new people, new prospects. And the name of my blog post today was Prospecting is Rejection Hell. And there's nothing easy about hearing the word no a hundred times before you get a yes. And some t it depends on the market. It depends on the company. Um, people will buy products, but doesn't mean they'll buy next month. They'll buy at least once or they'll buy two or three months and then they go away. So how many people do you have to talk to to keep people in for three months at a time when those slough off? You've got to have people replacing those. So I can totally understand why a toddler has fits and throws himself in the floor and kicks because damn it, we all want to hear yes from time to time. And if me saying the word hell and damn it pisses you off and you get off of my podcast or you leave my list, bye Sheila. I am good with that because I refuse to be anybody else but me. And um, that's just the way it is. I, you know, I've done marketing where I tried um, another, it's like you had this business personality and you had this, this you personality. And that is so, that's like so schizophrenic that I'm not, um, it, this is who I am. Don't like it, go away. Um, did you know that telemarketers, here's just some numbers for you to stop and think about. Telemarketers who make 450, you know, we'll say average 450 calls per day. I mean, they, they've got a, a dialing system that you're, it's click, 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 click. They're going through calls. And how many times are they're getting people who scream at them, swear at them, slam the phone down. Talking about an ego burst, that would be a horrible job to me, but somebody's got to do it somebody needs money and they're willing to do that conversation. And if you've ever really had a conversation with a telemarketer, you can hear the deadness in their voice that they are so shut down that I really feel sorry for the people. And it's like, you know, just take me off your list. And they just go click. It's like they hang up on you. Like I got you, but they generally speak to 450 people a day. That's 200, 2,250 per week to cold market and they only sign up about one percent of the people they actually talk to not the numbers they dial but the ones they talk to so that's about 22 to 30 people out of that whole bunch so now you stop and think how many people are you talking to a week um, in my master class academy right now the average people are talking to 25 and under. So if it took 450 calls a day to, or 2,225 for the month, just to get 20 to 30 people into your circle, into your funnel, how long is it going to take whatever company you're in? Is it going to take to get a yes? So if you're doing, I do about 57 uh, contacts a day. Not every single day, but a lot of days I do 57. And I have a system set up that I'm able to do that. And um, I've got a course that teaches you how to do that. And you're welcome to reach out to me if you'd like to have that course. Super simple. Most people don't know about it. It works. It works flawlessly. But how many people do you have to talk to in order to get that 1%? So the average network marketer, who is out there building a business that I have talked to that makes six, seven and eight figures a year said that they've only in the lifetime of their business signed up less than 200 people personally signed up less than 200 people. So you let that sink in. 
some people get discouraged because they're not bringing anybody in. But if you're not talking to, you know, 25, 50 people a day, if you're speaking to less than that, your 1% is going to take longer for you to reach. So it's not the company. It's the method that you're doing. So what hurts me when I see people jump in companies is they see that squirrel syndrome. It's like, oh, it looks better over there. Of course it looks better over there. Everything looks better over there. But your 1% is still over there. Wherever that is, your 1% is still there. There is so much rejection in network marketing. But just stop and think for just one minute. If you had two amazing people that you brought into your industry, and you know, say, let's say you're talking to 30 people a month, and two of those could completely change your life in business with just two people who go to work that are doing as much as you're doing. Wonder if you had six people that were trickling, that were building slowly, just trickling. And then somewhere in that trickle underneath you, not even necessarily the one you sign up, which is rarely ever um, your, your, your rock star that's in your business is rarely the person that you signed up. I know the one that I have under me, um, she's 10 levels down. I didn't sign her up, but I get the benefit of all of her volume. So that is what you want is to keep filling your funnel because you don't know who's going to work and who's going to be a customer. Absolutely. We love our customers and it's okay if that's what they want to be. But when you find that few, that six, that five that are really digging in and building, that's when the magic starts happening and your life in business will change. I worked for 25 and a half years in a hospital week after week for the pay that they decide they decided not me was enough for my job the one that i did no matter how much skill i had no matter how much time and service no matter how much schooling i had this is what they were going to pay me i could stay and receive it or i could go somewhere else and try to find more so in network marketing um i decide how much i want to work and i decide how much pay that I want to reach and the results that I have in my bank show me the efforts that I'm putting in. So I'm not going to lie to you. This is not an easy industry at, at all, but it is the most lucrative business that you can join. It's the cheapest overhead to join me in business is $165. I will put you into a coaching plan and show you what you need to do. It is up to you to actually do those steps. Cause I'm going to walk you through it. I'm going to point fingers here, do this, do this, do this. The results come from what you do. You know, it's not easy. Some days you, it, when you're working at home alone, just to keep your head up and your eyes dry when everything seems like it's going to shit. I'm, it, it is hard. Um, and having somebody in your circle that speak in your language are precious gems and they're very special people. And when you lose those people, it, it, it's a gut punch. It really does hurt just for the fact of having that connective energy. So I wish nobody any harm whatsoever. I just have been in this industry long enough. I, I see from this side what happens. And I just wish everybody the best. I want everybody to build. I want everybody to build that huge income. But you know, I make more than I ever would have in the nursing industry. And I know that. So I could have stayed in nursing at that platform, or I can come over here and go after what it is that I want and build that income. Will it take a long time? Maybe. Is it worth it? Absolutely. Cause I know that I'm not finished learning and I have more to accomplish with uh, the ones that, uh, have sticky power to hang in there and to build with me and for the people that I've not even yet connected with. It could be you, the person that's hearing my voice right now, you could be my next connection. Um, I'm going into my third week of teaching in a master class, an academy master class. In three weeks, people are already leaving the group. There was a little over a hundred people. Uh, we're already down to 91 because it's hard. 
it's not hard. Those two weeks lesson were just tracking what you were doing and turning it in. And they did not be embarrassed because they had to put zeros on their papers and, and to show it. So they're already complaining that, um, and they're giving excuses why they're not doing the simple steps. These are so simple. I'm talking, it is a pen to paper, make a mark, snap a picture, post it in the group. Three weeks. That's how sticky some of them are, but that's normal. It's not a bad thing, it's just normal. So how sticky are you? If you are in your own business, how sticky are you? And if you're still hanging in here and you're listening to my voice or you're um, on the blog post and you're listening to it through there, or maybe you're on my email and you're getting this podcast there, are you doing the work? Do you have a business or can I show you mine? I'll be glad to work with somebody who is ready to go. Are you staying in it long enough and sucking until you get better at it? Because this is a, a process. This is not something in case you've ever done this before that you know overnight, three months, six months, maybe even a year for some people. So if you are learning, you can only suck for so long and then you're going to start getting some breakthrough with the results. Because if you're, you're learning, you've got people speaking into you. If you're saying um, you're working, but you're not documenting your results, you're doing way less than you think you are. I know I was guilty of that. And when I had a coach, this, I've, every coach I've had, write it down, write it down, write it down, get a journal, get a journal. And I'm like, I don't have time to write in that journal. I don't want to write in that journal. But let me tell you, when you write in the journal and you give yourself credit for the conversations you have, it's there in front of you. Just like your paycheck, it is right there in front of you. It is providing you evidence of the work that you've done. So, you know, I'm proving that inside the Master Academy. Um, I'm watching these people who are brand new to me, brand new to this type of training. Um, and if you want to, if you want to grab that, you are welcome to get that. You're going to have to reach out to me because I don't have that particular link here in front of me. Um, but the, there's going to be people that that's going to get the link and they're going to, oh, I can't afford it. And then they complain about their results. You know, that's a sign that you're making excuses and you don't have to make excuses. You can do the, do the thing. You can do your thing. You can learn these simple, simple. It's not. The steps aren't hard, staying consistent is what's hard. So I want to offer you um, my five secrets to using attraction marketing to create quality leads. Today, you can have it for $37, 37 bucks. I'm gonna give you five top secrets to attraction marketing that will work if you will use them. All you have to do is go to Angela, Brooke, B R O O K dot com forward slash gift, G I F T. That's Angela Brooke dot com forward slash gift. It's $37. If that's too expensive, I can't help you. But I want to. I want to see you succeed. I want my mission is to show people that this little nurse in Kentucky who was working three, 13 very long hour shifts driving 45 minutes to work and home with a toddler at home, I was able to build this business and I, I was sticky. I stayed with it even though I wasn't seeing the results that I felt like that I should be getting. And you're going to get the results that you have earned by the actions that you're doing. So I hope you've enjoyed this today. This is my little rant. Yesterday I talked about, um, uh, You've got to stay in it and suck until you get better. And, and today, I'm just telling you, prospecting is rejection, hell, because you're going to hear no a lot. But if you have sticky skin and you stay in this, you can be successful if you'll just trust me and stay in the process. Come get your gift at AngelaBrook.com forward slash gift, and I will see you on the next podcast.